I, I grew up with, with Buddha in the house, with Santo Nino, with God, with the rosary, with the Bible. We were the born-again Roman Buddhists. No? So, as we would always say, we can never lock down the gospel. Anybody who's listening to this message, I know it's not an accident you're listening to this. I want you to put this in your soul and in your heart. Jesus is our ultimate hope. If you've been uh, following us for the past two weeks, uh, Mariam preached first week, I preached on the second week. But in our preachings, there's a common thread that is seen in Isaiah chapter 1 and in Isaiah chapter 2. The Lord God invites us, come, let us reason together. Come, let us talk. Last week, the Lord says, come, walk in the light of Jacob. There's an invitation that God has given His people at the time, even though He knew they were rebelling against Him. And today, now we look at what would happen to that invitation. When the Lord sent out that invitation, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6, we look now what happened. It says there, For you have rejected your people, the house of Jacob, because they are full of things from the east, and of fortune tellers like the Philistines, and they strike hands with the children of foreigners. So, the Lord now tells us the response of the people. The people have rejected the invitation. Sabi ni Lucky Lord, thank you, but they have rejected God's invitation. So God now, in response, rejects them because, okay, look at this. They are full of things. Wala nang space si Lord doon. They were full of things from the East. They would get practices of different kinds and of fortune tellers. Lahat ng mga madam, ano, uso pa ba yan? Mga madam, madam o-ring. Wala na ata, no? The fortune tellers, like the Philistine, and they strike hands with the children of foreigners. They were entering into partnership with people that God prohibited them to enter into partnership with. You know, this reminds me of when I was growing up. My, my parents both have some sort of Christian background, but Jesus was not their God. In fact, their God was halo-halo, right? Not this kind of halo-halo. But I grew up with a halo-halo religion. Okay? In English, mix-mix. Okay? Mix-mix of religion. I, I grew up with, with Buddha in the house, with Santo Nino, with God, with the Rosary, with the Bible. We were the born-again Roman Buddhists. No? So, naguguluhan kami nung bata kami, sino ba talaga yung Diyos namin? In fact, the reason we had all these gods and we mix everything up, because technically, my parents believed that the more gods I prayed to, the more likely my prayers would be answered. But the reason for our success is because when Santo Nino did not listen, at least Buddha did. Or the God of the Protestants did. Right? So we pray to all of them and we'll see who'll answer. And so we were, we were kind of mixed growing up. No? So may jumagulo for us. Right? And, and because of that, we've realized now, as we were trying to decipher, why would Papa and Mama do that? They became Christians, by the way. It's because at the end of the day, it was all about what? Getting what we want. I get those gods so that I could get what I want because ultimately, okay, ultimately, who's God? We are God. We want these gods whom we worship to give all that I want because ultimately, I am God. And this was what the Israelites were experiencing at the time. God was saying, come, let's reason together. I'll turn your sin that's red and make it white as snow, yet also come and walk in the light. And they said, no, Lord, we will worship you, yet we will add so many things to the mix because we want to make sure, right? We want to make sure that God is going to bless us, whoever that God is will bless us. Now, dito tayo mahirapan. No? God's invitation was rejected. And there were good reasons why it was rejected for the Israelites at the time. You see, we want the feel of God, 
but not God. We want some sort of spirituality without really having that relationship or lordship of Jesus in our lives. Yung bang external, I could act a certain way, I could act pious, yet I know in my heart I'm really far away from God. In fact, I've invited all the gods to come and serve me because ultimately I am the God. And here's the reason they rejected him. Verse 7, because their land is filled with silver and gold and that there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses and there's no end to their chariots. What was Isaiah 2 describing to us? In Tagalog, bakit ko pa kailangan ng Diyos? Ang dami ko naman pera. I don't need God. I'm powerful. I have the horses. I have the chariots. Ano sabi ni Isaiah sa kanila? Charot. Hindi, lang lang kayo. Okay. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Pa- tama ba yun? Okay, so, their land. Alam nyo, I- I've been a campus missionary. And I think uh, our, our ENC might agree with me here. But I was assigned to some of the schools that were really hard. It was hard because we had to enter private schools where they're so well-fed and they're so rich that they don't see the need of God. They were famous. They were powerful. And so when we talk about Jesus, they're like, yeah, okay, let me add Jesus into the mix of whatever is the blessings that I've been receiving. Land is filled with silver and gold. Doesn't mean that you're rich materially, that you're really blessed by God, just like these people. Not because you're powerful now that the Lord's hand is on you. The Israelites thought, hey, life is good. The problem is, because life is good, they forgot that God is good far greater than whatever blessings they have received. They have the three Ps. Power, prestige, and pera. They had everything. Why do I need God? And that was the challenge. Their land is filled with what? Idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their own fingers have made. This was my point. Of What really was the issue here was that the idolatry ultimately was all about who? Us. I want to be my own God. I remember talking to somebody who was a Christian who turned into a militaristic atheist. And she was saying, why I never asked Jesus to die for me? Why would he die for me? Who gave Jesus the right or the Christians the right or scriptures the right to tell me what is right and what is wrong. I only had one question for her. Then are you saying that your definition of right and wrong depends on what you believe? Because if that's how you're going to frame your argument, then who is God? The God of scripture or you? And this was the problem of what I say was dealing with. They wanted the feel of God, but they don't want God because for them, I am God. It was human-centered to its very core with some sort of parang feel mo, parang Christian, pero sa totoo, hindi. And that's the problem with a lot of the, the teachings we hear today, even outside of the church from the law of attraction and the law of the universe and how everything... I- imagine this teaching, and I-, I want you to stay with me. Gurus of the world have taught us, and people pay thousands of dollars for this, that they will teach you how to get the energies of the universe to align to what you want. Guys, kung hindi pa to si Hima at saka si Shira, hindi ko alam sino to. How in the world can we align the energies to come to us as if we are God? And that's the problem. We think we have the solution. 
And you don't have to go spiritual to go f- deeper into this. Even the concept of the self-made man and woman. I am my own boss. I am the captain of my ship. Is the very essence of this one. Yes, I believe in God, but I drive my ship. I'm the captain of my life. I make my own life. I'm the author of my life. Yes, I have God. I love God. But I'm the author of my life. The idols they made were the idols they worship. If I made something into something to worship, who is far greater? The one I created or the one who created the one that was created? I am God. So I made my own God and I prayed to this God that I made with my own hands because in reality, I am more powerful than this idol and this carved images made by my own hands. Today, there's not a lot of that, of idols, right? When we talk about idolatry, it's not really those carved images, especially for us who are consider ourselves evangelicals and Christians. Our idols now are what we call functional gods or functional saviors. That instead of running to Jesus, I run to this thing or to this hobby or to this relationship because it's my functional God. I can't live without it. It has become an idol in my life. The need for power, the need for control, that's idolatry. Because we all know God is the source of power. God is in control, not you. And so we turn to these functional saviors. If you're single and there's that loneliness in your heart and you jump from one relationship to the other knowing it's even a very unhealthy practice but you still do it, it's because you think by having a love life, this would complete me. So you made love life your functional God or your functional Savior. You're making up these gods to fill me up when in reality, and you know this and we sing this, and I know this and I sing this, yet I am guilty of it that I've made some things and some people my functional Savior. When my identity is no longer based on what Christ has done, but on what I can fill myself up with, those are idols in our lives that God needs to expose. And I've always asked the Lord, Lord, continue to expose those idols in my heart. Verse 12, For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty. Again, against all that is lifted up, and it shall be brought, what? Low. The Lord says, there will come a day. Okay, trust in those idols. Let those be your functional Savior. But I'm telling you, there will come a day. Because of your pride, you make yourself your own God, you will be brought low. You really trust in those things? There will come a day. From verse 13 to 16, all they were looking to as their source is nothing compared to God. You look at verse 13, against the cedars of Lebanon, against the oaks of of Bashan, against all the lofty mountains, against all the uplifted hills, against every high tower, against fortified walls, the ships of Tarshish, the beautiful craft, all of this. You trust those? You trust your economy? Tarshish, you trust the oaks? You think that's strong? There will come a time I will bring it down. Because you have to see, I am God, not them. You trust in your wealth? You trust in your power? You trust in your beauty? There will come a day. You will understand that is all empty power. Because it's functional God, but it's not God Himself. Grabe si Lord, parang dumiretso siya dito eh. Invite, invite, rejected. 
So he says, okay, you reject me. Here's what I need to say. Here's what I'm saying to you. You love those, the things that you have created with your own hands, it will be brought low. Verse 17, and the haughtiness of man shall be humbled. The pride of men shall be humbled. And the lofty pride of men shall be brought low. And the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. Jesus now was saying, who is God? And the idols shall utterly pass away or completely vanish. Where you're holding on to one day, completely vanish. It's gone. Holding on to money, one day, gone. Holding on to health or your body, one day, gone. Holding on to connections, one day, gone. Holding on to spiritual superstitions, one day, gone. It is a gentle reminder from the Lord today. Hindi po ako galit, ha? nagpapaliwanag lang ako. No? Gentle reminder from the Lord today. People of God, don't hold on to the idols of our lives or the idols the world offers us. We have, we have to hold on to God. And people, here's the result of a life that's surrendered unto idols and not unto God. The people shall enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of His majesty when He rises to terrify or to tremble, to shake or to crash the earth. What was the Lord saying? Because you've trusted those in spite of all my invitation to you, there will come a day you will hide in the caves out of terror because the enemy is coming. You will hide because there will be a trembling and a shaking. May experience na ba yon? Shinake kayo ni Lord. There's a shaking in your life. And what needs to be shaken is removed. The Bible says it's going to come where the Lord will do a shaking in our lives. Wag yan hawakan mo, wag yan hawakan mo. Tanggalin mo yung excess sa buhay mo. In that day, mankind will cast away their idols of silver and their idols of gold, which they made for themselves to worship. To whom will they give it? To the moles or the rats and to the bats. I, I, I want you to picture this because this is, for, for me, it's kind of prophetic. No? I'm not being, hindi ko to tinatahi to today, no? pero it's like the Lord reminded me, for sure this was not the intent of the author, but I want to speak to you guys about this verse. There will come a day all our riches our power, our fame, our idols will give to who? The rats and the bats. You know, we've experienced a pandemic. Ang chismis galing daw sa paniki ang, ang pandemic, di ba? Kung totoo man, <laughs> na galing sa paniki man to, di ba? All of our riches, our power, our health, and this pandemic brought about by the bat. It's like, even with everything that I have, we've seen billionaires died of this virus. We've seen the most powerful people. No amount of money can buy what their body needs. It's been cast away because I've hold on. The comparison of what we're experiencing now it's like a picture of Isaiah 2. What use is your love of money when God establishes His kingship here on earth? 
it's like giving it to the rats and to the bats. To enter the caverns of the rocks and the clefts of the cliff from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of His majesty when He rises to terrify the earth. Grabe no yung dalawang emotions doon. Parang there's the terror yet the majesty. It's like one day all our eyes will be open and we would see, wow, see Lord, wow. It's either I worship in majesty or I hide in terror because I've lived my life based on the idols or the functional gods that I hold on to. There will come that time. And then he says last, in this verse, in this chapter, stop trusting in mere humans who have but a breath in their nostrils. Why hold them in esteem? This is like the Lord speaking straight to the heart of His people and saying, My children, stop trusting in mere humans like you and me. Why? I am so limited. I am so powerless. Why hold me in esteem as if I'm the answer to everything there is? Does this sound familiar to us? Next year, election natin ulit, no? And you'll see the same story again and again. One Filipino will change the lives of the millions of Filipinos. Stop trusting in mere humans. Oh, this one person or this one spiritual leader. Oh, pag nakuha lang nitong isang guy na to. Or pag itong influencer naging Christian. Gaganda ang mundo. We've seen it all. We see that the kingdom of God does not work that way. But most importantly, this is another invitation. If you look at this verse, and sab ni God, stop trusting in human beings. Why? They're like you. The same. Same problems, same pandemic, same virus. Why do you trust another human being? What's the invitation here? The invitation for us as a church is to trust God. Don't trust men. I don't have the answer to your problems. I did not die on the cross for your... See, I know I'm your pastor. But I don't have the solutions. God has. God invites us as a church. We are entering into another month of all this uncertainty. Ang tanong, kailan daw matatapos? Ay, malay ko din ba? Yun nga sabi ko, hindi ko rin alam ang sagot. No? I don't know. But all I know is I need to stop trusting in mere humans like you, like me. But we all fix our eyes on this God and say, God, we trust in you. We trust in your sovereign hand and your sovereign will to take control of our lives. Today, the Lord invites us. Invites us what? To trust in Him. Trusting, and I want to end with this, is not easy. Trusting is losing our right to have control over our own lives. To trust means it is no longer I who will drive my life. It is no longer I who will take control of my destiny. I'm putting it in the hands of my God. Today, it's a good time for us to reassess where we are with our walk with God. Para tong ano, diagnostic check for us today. Where do I put my trust? Do I put my trust in men, in money, in vaccine, you know, in all these things the world gives? Or do I put my trust in God? Something for us to think about. 
something for us to pray about. So uh, let me invite you to pray. We're going to pray as a church today. And I do hope the preaching today would be like a mirror for all of us. No? It would make us see, Lord, who do I trust? Let's bow down our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, this text is so straightforward and it shows to us our tendency to take control of our lives and to be our own God. And Lord, that has been the temptation ever since Genesis when Satan tempted Eve, you will be like God. Lord, I pray that we would learn how to discern what is from God and what is not from God. Lord, that we might be able to see, Lord, that even in our actions, there are times where we put our trust more in ourselves and in our ability as human beings rather than to put our trust in God. Today, Lord, realign us again. Fix our eyes, our heart to trust and depend on you, our God. Jesus, we surrender. Jesus, we put our trust in you, which means we surrender our right to be in control. We let God take control. Lord, if we really look honestly in our own lives, we would see so many things are out of our hands. We couldn't even control. Even changing a person, it's not really even up to us. It's only you can transform hearts. And so I pray that starting today we would learn how to put our trust and dependency on you trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all our ways we acknowledge you and you will make our path straight so today lord expose the idols in our hearts speak to us jesus Lord, we surrender to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, as we close this service, I would want you to do an honest reflection, a self-reflection. Lord, where do I put my trust? Lord, saan ba talaga ako nakahawa? And I want you to be very honest because many times we know what to say but we really don't believe what we're saying because we're living out a different kind of trust. So we want to help you as a church. If you need somebody that you want to talk to and you're saying, you know what? I'm making a decision today to trust in you, God. But I need help. I need someone to walk with me and journey with me. We would like to connect with you. If you would write the word connect on our thread, Somebody will talk to you. Somebody will call you. Somebody will pray for you. And don't fight this battle alone. Especially as God does His work in our hearts, the more you need the community to run along with you and fight those battles with you. We're committed to help you guys grow in your walk with Jesus. Let me just uh, close in prayer. Lord, I pray for each and everyone here today. Speak to them right now. Lord, whether old Christian, new Christian, or not even a Christian, I pray, speak to us. Lord, that we would put our trust in you. And Lord, I pray, God, that we will be open for people to speak into our lives, to journey with us, to help us along the way so that we won't fight this battle alone. Bless each and everyone here today. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I know God wants to do His work in you. So please, again, put connect there. We'd love to connect with you. God bless you and see you in our next online service.